welcome back. How are you? I'm very excited for today because I finally, finally got bit again to record. Finally. Um, this video is long. I'm, I'm sure it is. I, I, it's me and it's been over a month since I've recorded. Uh, welcome to anybody who is new. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, if short videos are your thing, this may not be for you simply because it'll take you like 50 years to watch it. But I would love to have you stay and check it out anyway. Uh, welcome to anybody who is coming back. Thank you so much for your support. Um, my floss tube anniversary was last month, beginning of October. Um, it's very hard to believe that I've been doing this for a year now. Um, I didn't really have a vision of where it would be when I first started recording. Um, I certainly didn't ever think I would come this far as far as the support, the subscribe, you know, I mean, the numbers have never like been important to me as far as, oh, gotta get the numbers, gotta get, that's never been a thing. The, the community and the connections that I have made over the last year have been everything to me the last year. Um, so anyways, um, no giveaway at this point. So, but stay tuned because you never know with me. Um, I just, I, I don't have the mental capacity at this point to do one. So uh, I made a cuppa, hot chocolate, that tastes like a chocolate covered banana because there's banana moonshine in it and it's delicious. But it's cold. We're not used to snow here until like after December, usually January or February really is when we see snow. It's snowed twice already and it's November something or other -eth. at O dark 30 in the morning. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. Do I ever? I think it's Friday. Yes, Friday, the no November the 18th, technically, at two o'clock in the morning. Um, sleep was okay for a couple of weeks. Um, things happened. Life happened and retreat happened. Bag sewing mania happened. <laughs> And that knocked my that knocked my whole schedule out. So I'm trying to get it back to where it needs to be, but it's not there yet. Um, I think stress has played a big role in it this this month, along with the just being up too late for like a week. Um, I have written stuff down, mostly just what I worked on. Um, so hopefully I don't forget a whole lot, but I, I have not made notes for floss tubes at all in the last month. Again, a lot of personal stress going on. I'm okay, but it was too much to, to think about the last month. I have one, two, five whips that you have seen before. and six that you have not. I was kind of on a starting spree and didn't really even realize it when I was, it was happening. I mean, you have to remember too, it's been, it's been a month, 35 days, I think, probably 37 by the time it finally posts. Cause it's going to take like a year to edit. Although I did, I, I did already take my pictures. I had to go through and see where the heck I was on stuff a month or more ago. Uh, retreat happened, Stitching in the Springs. Um, it is a local retreat to me, a very small venue, so there's like maybe 50 people there, which is amazing. Um, that's the same one I went to last year, and this year was epic. So epic. I had the friends, most of my friends that um, I met there last year and have hung out with, we have gotten together every single month for the entire year since that retreat. Unfortunately, one of, one of the... Uh, four of us wasn't able to make it this time. Um, but to have them there and then to have a whole slew of people that I have made friends with over the last year, just because of YouTube 
was the best thing that has happened to me in a long time. Like a long time. I mean, other than the birth of my son and getting married, you know, normal stuff. But um, I got like, I don't know, less than 500 stitches in all weekend long because I was too busy running my mouth and just being excited and living in the moment and experiencing people without trepidation for the first time in a long time. So, uh, but of course when retreat happens, haul happens. And then I also had haul because I was able to um, finally finalize an order that I had put in in May with my local needle workshop um, keepsakes. So that came in. I had a giveaway come in that I won. So there's there's lots, guys. And yes, I know, I'm still running my mouth and haven't showed you anything. So let's get into it, shall we? One more sip. One more sip. So good. Made it with milk. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the stuff that you have seen before. First up is a kit by Gecko Rouge. This is... Dragon by Lorna Lane. And I don't remember why I got this or when I got it, but I got it because it's gorgeous. Oh, it's what I use my voucher on. I forgot. I'm a club member. I don't remember even what they call their club. Gold, gold club member or something. Um, anyway, this is on their 28 count easy grid, easy guide, easy count, whatever it's called. Uh, stitch one over one, and that is how far I got. Um, I added most of the stuff here. I like stopped in the middle of a stitch because I was um, working on this. I don't know, I think I must have just stopped in the middle of the night or something, but I got the little bubbles that are up in the corner done, and all that is pretty much filled in except for a little stripe here that still needs to be filled in <clears throat> and then yeah just kind of going on with that I got I work I put in 1201 stitches for a total of 2149 and this is at 2.64 percent now this is not a true full coverage piece um, the, the part that is there is mostly full coverage, but it's, it's not a true full coverage piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, next is one I try to work on every week for Mermaid Monday, Sal. I do have a few people that have, uh, joined in with me. I am, I have been terrible, horrible at posting on Instagram lately. I got, I don't know, maybe three or four days worth. <clears throat> Excuse me of consistent posting and then it all went out the door again. I don't know why I'm so bad at posting on there. Probably because captions are hard. And I don't like to just post information with nothing said about it because I don't know, I just don't. For this is Face of a Mermaid by Total Cross Stitch. <clears throat> nope. Come on now. There we go. You guys know I fight with this tablet a lot. So there she is, face of a mermaid. I've been working in the upper left hand corner. I've got some decent work on the shells done. Um, she's not been coming out every Monday because sometimes I just don't know what day it is. And I forget to pull her out and then it's Tuesday. Or like I started working on her tonight and it was technically Thursday when I pulled her out. Oh, it's on. I know. I know. I'm talking to myself. My, my puppers is with me tonight. And hopefully he does not start whining. He's getting pretty old. He's like 13 now. And he's starting to have to go pee every like three or four hours. Yeah. Um, so anyways, pulled out Face of a Mermaid. She is stitched one over one on 28 count. This is mystery fabric because I forgot to write it down because I'm terrible at taking notes. I think it's Lugana, but I could be wrong. I got a page finish. 
And oh, I can use did I fit it in there? There we go. She looks so good. Well, it looks she's not there yet, but you can see her her headband back in here. Um, the bubbles came out really well. And these seashells, man, I cannot believe how awesome that looks. And this is like this is the middle seashell. This is not that far from being like halfway complete this way. And the detail in this is just amazing. I will gush over the detail every time I pull this out. <laughs> so total I got in this was Oh, there she is. I got in 2,165 stitches for a total of 8,338. She's at 9.53%. <clears throat> Ta da! Love this one. Okay. Next is Dragons of Sabbat. This one is also a stitch along with um, Dizzy Stitcher, Darren. He gifted me this chart and I am stitching all the black because I can't, I wanted to do it on 28 count because it's huge. It is a big piece. It's not quite super size, but it's big. And I could not do 28 count black fabric. Ooh. That's what it looks like. This is a chart from Pain Free Crafts. Um, Sarah, the owner from Pain Free Crafts, is also working on this. She is stitching it on like a, if it's not black, it's like a charcoal. And she's got m pretty much the whole center done and the blue dragon, and now she's working on the purple dragon, and it looks amazing. Cannot wait to get over there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh. Now it's going to be kind of hard to tell where I'm at on this, simply because it's still just black <laughs> but I am to the point where in the last corner over here there's like 400 stitches of not black that I'm really excited about so the, the very tippy edge of I think the circle in the background is gonna start showing up and then I'll have the dragon in the next in the next square or the next page so this is Three pages complete, I think. Mm, two, yeah, three pages complete. So I'm. I'll talk a little bit. I f kind of forgot to talk a bit about it last time, but I hadn't really implemented it yet, so I didn't want to chat too much about it and make it a fake plan and then break the fake plan. Um, but I kind of made a rotation that worked until it didn't work. Because that's what I do. I make a plan and then I decide not to do it. No, I do like it. It's just I don't keep notes or keep track of things like that very well. Alright. And the next is I don't really have a cover photo for it because this was a mystery stitch along that had choices. So <clears throat> this is Dark Queen of the Seas. I think most people are familiar with her. And if you're not, just Google it, Dark Queen of the Seas, and you will see tons of finished products, varieties, and modifications, and things like that. Um, I don't know how many I actually got on her, because I was not keeping track very well of what I've stitched on her so far. Did I even write anything down? Nope. Not, not a word. I worked on her a little bit during uh, the retreat, like a little bit. But I had worked on this seaweed part last time, and I don't know if you can see it, but I did get, there was a tiny, yeah, there you go, tiny little bit of back stitching. I got it done. I did that at the retreat and was very proud, and I sweated the whole time because it was kind of hard to follow. And then I put, I'm starting in on the magic swirl thing. Hush, hush. And then, like, I think I even stopped midway pulling the needle out because I, like, I had to pull the needle out and stick it on the needle minder when I pulled her out. 
but I love her. She's looking so good. I do have Dark Queen of the Earth stitch along. I have not started her because I'm waiting for the bead and thread pack to come in. Um, it's stuck in customs, apparently, for the thread, I think, is what we're waiting on. Well, Leslie's been, or not, was it Leslie? Yes, Leslie from Under the Seas Fabrics uh, has been really good about keeping in communication, so. It'll get here when it gets here. It's not like I don't have anything to work on till then. All right, next is one I had not, I actually had to go through my whip parade to find the uh, progress on this one because I had not worked on it in a hot minute. And this, oh, I have a picture of this one. This is Bright and Starlight. This is a chart by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is by artwork by Sherry Gearhart. And I had started working out because this is a circle and I was like, I don't, I don't know how to really find the edge of the circle. I started in the middle. And I had, and then I couldn't figure out if I wanted to just go up or down or left or so I was like doing it in a round and parking and uh, my brain decided that it did not like all those park threads nor how they were in the way. So I didn't really work all of them away, but I did stitch up to the top and then I'm going to be filling in and working my way down. So. I'm going to stick it before here because I have to kind of hold you. It's going to be hard to do the side by side, I think, because of the way it's stitched now. So you can see it was just the middle bit. And I am here now. I've extended it from the middle. I just kind of stitched up the stripe of hair and then picked a thread and worked it up and then just filled it in. Now this is on 28 count, but I'm doing this one two over one ten stitch. And, oh, I can't see, I can't see. Um, I'm not hating it on this piece. So most of my other pieces that I had started out on is tent, sti is tent stitch have been converted back to full cross. But this one has not been too bad. I think because this is a regular color chart um, it's not as confetti heavy. I don't have to worry about, because my problem with tent stitch is the way I start my threads. Um, yes, with a two strand tent stitch, you can do a loop start, but if your thread is longer than whatever section you're working on, then you have your short thread that you have to start. And I don't like waste aways at all. Um, I, I like to anchor it on the back, but flipping it and anchoring it it was pain for me, but so far, not too bad. Usually I have two stitches next to each other so I can anchor it the way I like to anchor it. Um, not much to say about that one other than it just got brought out. Um, I actually had the rotation that I was talking about. I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and talk about it. Why not throw this in the middle of everything? Um, I made a list of all of my like I kind of threw in categories. So it's like cross stitch kits, embroidery kits, fancy ladies, uh, stitch alongs, gifts, smalls, smalls and samplers I put into a category, full coverage hades, um, heaven and earth designs, and full coverage non-hades. And then I listed everything. Uh, that's not everything, everything. That was what I was willing to, that I knew kind of from the top of my head. Um, I did dig through my whip drawers, um, but I did not, I did not put everything in here. Mostly, most of the stuff. And then I made wheels on my phone, my, like a tiny decisions wheel picker thingy. Um, for each category... It actually has been so long since I've used it and you're on my phone, so I can't look at it. But basically I let it pick eight projects for me, one out of each category. And my plan was to just kind of rotate through that group of projects until I got kind of, I, until I hit 
a point where there was something in there I wasn't ever really pulling out because I was tired of working on it. And then I would rotate that out for a same piece in the same category. The problem with that is, is multiple pieces of my overlap categories. So then I was like, well, crap, which category am I switching out for? And then I, it was too much thinking. I don't want to think that much when I'm cross stitching. So I think I will probably still stick with the, I like having the smaller pile of con like constantly pulling out of. Um, so I think what I'm doing and what this is sort of naturally turned into is that I'm going to rotate through them all until I'm, until I'm kind of like, I don't want to work on any of these and then I'll pull out a new rotation, which is actually probably going to happen except for my, um, face of a mermaid. She's going to stay out for every Monday stitching Monday ish. And then, yeah, so it'll still be switched up a bit. Um, I'm not necessarily limiting myself to like, oh, if it's a page finish, I'm going to put it away because that didn't happen on a lot of these. I'm like, okay, I got a page finish. Let's go to the next one. But I am to the point where I think like dragons of the spot, I'm ready to put that away for a little while. Um, the bright and starlight, I'm ready to put away for a little while. Uh, the gecko. So I'm getting to the point where they're all kind of a, as a group going, eh, I'm not really feeling them anymore. So I'll rotate them out for eight ones that I want to, and we'll go from there. So you'll still have a variety of things to look for on the channel, but not necessarily no uh, progress, if that makes sense. Because I'll have them out for a little while. Now, I don't know if that translates into I'm only going to record once a month. Because I'm not going to commit to, oh, I'll work on one project every day, like a different project every day and make sure that they get, you know, it may be one whip for a week, which is what happened during the month. Um, and I was totally happy to kind of be monogam monogam <laughs> monogamously stitching on something for a week. Um, so I can't really necessarily say oh, I'll record every week because that could be really really short video, like five minutes short, which I can't ruin my reputation of movie length videos with only one whip. <laughs> okay. So last whip that I have worked on, I pulled out Gypsy Firefly. This is also Heaven and Earth Design, um, artwork by Amy Stewart. If I ever post on Instagram again, I will, but I don't know how often or when, when the spirit will move me. But she'll go into the Anything Amy Sal. And this one I am doing on 18 count. Ada. Oh, the uh, if I didn't say specifically, the other fabrics are Ada. Except for the one I said wasn't Ada. Two. Something. Um, is big. This is the regular size max color version of Gypsy Firefly. Um, I don't hate it, but it hurts my fingers to work on it. Um, it's not, it's not really bulky, but it is kind of hard to pull the needle through a little bit. Um, once I get like, you know, an area filled in. So I'm, I'm stabbing myself in my, in my finger and I do have like thimble stickers, like the little, little, la, 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 the little leather strips to stick, but it, they're in, it, it's awkward. I don't like it. I don't like using thimbles. So this one only gets like 600 stitches before I get too sore to work on it. Like 600 a day. This is where I'm at. I have an epi 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 I'm not drunk. I swear. I've had like a third of that drink and there's not that much in it. It's just been like a month since I've recorded and two weeks since I've talked <laughs> since the retreat. Um, so this, being that it was one of the first ones that I started, uh, first, like, big full coverage pieces, max color, uh, it's kind of morphed a little bit how I was stitching it. It started out, like, I did all the 939, and then went back and was filling in confetti ninja stitches, and that was making me crazy. So I started parking. 
Well, now that's making me crazy doing these giant diagonal, all right, not giant, but big diagonal and not really feeling like I'm making good progress. So I, I went back in and I'm finding, I'm finding a spot that kind of gives me joy as far as method of stitching. And I am surprised at myself. I didn't think I would ever be a page stitcher, but those those really do feel like mini finishes, even if you can't see anything in the picture yet. Um, so I did, I officially completed the first page. It only had like 15 or 20, maybe, I don't know, it, a tiny amount of stitches left in the first page. And then this is actually, now it's the right side up. Were you laughing at me the whole time? You should be. <laughs> I swear I've not been drinking that much. Okay, so first page finishes here. You can see where the, the threads kind of end for this page. And then these are for the page down here. And then this is the second page that I have been slowly working the parked threads in for. And once those are finished, I will finish filling this page in and then move down to the right. I haven't had a desire yet to, to go down for pages yet. So that can change, who knows. Oh man, I feel stupid. Sideways. Oh, whatever. It's the difficulty of looking at a camera that's flipped for you. <laughs> anyway. So if you've seen the regular size, regular color version of this chart, it is black in here. I don't know why it's different for the max color to switch it to 939, but I love blues, so I'm okay with this. So, uh, I don't know if this will stay out or for how long. Kind of thinking that'll maybe substitute for um, Bright and Starlight for a while. But we shall see. Because one of the things about this rotation that I have is that if I feel like a new start... I'm not necessarily going to put away what I have out, like rotate it out for something. I'll just pull it in and then rotate it out as normal at the same time as like the other, I don't know. I make plans, I break plans. Y'all, we are too rigid in our professional lives to worry about following some self-imposed imaginary hard and fast rules in our relaxation life. I just, I understand some people need that for themselves. I'm the opposite. I, I have too many things that I have to do in my professional and, and other personal life that when it comes to my personal time, I am not going to constrain myself to, to rules that I have made up for myself. I'm not going to do it. Okay, everything else is new starts. I started, again, these are all different categories. I haven't really been telling you the categories because I don't remember which ones overlap into which and what was pulled for what category. I should probably write that down next time I do this. Be a good idea. This is one of the smalls. This is a Mill Hill Buttons and Beads kit, Ice Castle. These pictures do not do it justice. It's a good picture. But beads are so hard to photograph, and after I did the seahorse one, I realized that these have so much life in them in person. So I started this, and I got, oh, Gypsy Firefly had, I put 1,257 stitches in over several days. Um, I put in a few stitches at the retreat, not many. Um, it is now at 11,870 stitches and at 4.19%. You'll, you'll see a theme in my percentages. They're all very small. Um, excuse me. This I put in 981 stitches. No idea what percentage that is because it's beads. And if I count this for, um, that's terrible. If I count this for, uh, any of my stitching challenges and games and stuff, I, I can't count it quite like my full full crosses and half crosses and beads get all, all kind of differently. So 
Doesn't really look like almost a thousand stitches, does it? But it's there. Mostly blues. I think my only complaint with Mill Hill kits is that you have to separate the floss. I actually had to pull out my, it's like nine shades of blue and a white. I had to pull out my DMC thread book and match up colors. It was that close. So, and I'll do all the beads at the, at the end. So that's Ice Castle. That one, I don't know. I don't, I don't have explanations for these projects. I just like them. Okay. So this next one is kind of, I think I had talked about it last time. Um, this was a birthday gift from my friend Kristen who came down to Stitching the Springs with me and it was amazing to meet her in person. Um, we get along just as well in person as we did online. So, uh, cheers Kristen. All right. So last time I had asked you, yes, I had started this because I asked for advice on gridding that did not involve pens because this is hand dyed fabric. And I went ahead with, um, I, I had some cautions against the gridding with, um, like floss, like at once, even if it's just one strand of floss, if you split it or like sewing thread, I was thinking of using, um, even, even if you use just one strand, if you split it, it's really hard to get out from what I was warned multiple times. So I took that advice. I did not use that. Um, I went on to Amazon and found some sulky hollow shimmer that was on sale um i looked at the slivers and i mean i had them but this was a lot cheaper and i got two spools of it and it worked really well but y'all i wanted to stab my eye out by the time i was done gridding this thing it was a pain in the tuchus to grid that And I'm still thinking of doing it on the fancy ladies because the boo-boo that I did with Titania that I'm still putting off going back to because I have to fix it still. I mean, I, I fixed it already, but I have to stitch it and fix it. Stitch the fix into it. And that's been putting me off. So I'm like, I probably should really grid the fancy ladies because I can't count past two. So I did that. And I have a start that you probably cannot see. I I don't know. Um, I oh here I guess I should like actually show you what it is, huh? huh? This is a pain free crafts chart. White horse, not the button I wanted. There we go. There we go. Um, this is a full coverage piece. Uh, all that white in the background is charted. I don't want to stitch that much white. I will stitch that much black. I don't want to stitch that much white. Um, that and I just felt like it was maybe something a little, I don't know. I just wanted to try something different. So I decided to cut out that white and I've already like pulled out all the background that I didn't want to stitch. So it's like 20% and then I forgot to take note of how many I've actually stitched. I think it's just 130 um, I had started in the middle and messed it up right away, hence the gridding. And then I started in the bottom right hand corner, simply because most of the background up here is being taken out. I didn't want to have to fiddle with what square was where. Usually I'm an upper left hand corner girl, but that doesn't exist right now. So bottom left hand corner is what it was. And that's what I put in there. Now this is 28 count bestitch me. Twenty-eight count opal lessent Lugana winter blues from Bestitch Me, and I forgot when I was picking this out that hand dyed fabric shrinks. So this is more like a thirty count, and it it, it was making my eyes a little cross doing it. So my stitches aren't super super pretty. Um, I have since been stitching more on a. Lugana type fabric, so I think I I feel like my stitches will lay better once I start back up on back up on this again. 
Oh, I can't talk. I'm about to start blaming it on liquor just so that I don't look like a, an idiot. Um, so I do want to work more on that. Um, I just had other things uh, take my take my interest. So that's going to stay out until I get some more love on it. And I know that one's in the gift category because that was the only gift I had out at the moment. So that will stay in when I rotate, rotate out the other things. <clears throat> All right. Next new start was, which one is this one? I started this one at the retreat. And if you watch Suki, the brown eyed stitcher, y'all, I'll talk more about this. Um, when I go into like life update, retreat update. Um, but she was one of the people that came over for the retreat and meeting her in person was amazing. Uh, just as amazing as meeting Kristen. It was like, it was like we'd always known each other, like the three of us for sure. And then, and Jen was there from Backcountry Stitcher and she mel meshed right into our group so well. Uh, loved it. Anyways, Suki and I have this chart from Charting Creations. This is a D Dakota Detweiler piece, uh, Spirit of the Phoenix as a sister piece to our Canopy Heart Sal. And we thought it completely appropriate to start it, actually start it together at the retreat. So like we actually put the first stitch, <laughs> first stitch in together at the retreat. Y'all, I swear I'm, I'm not, I'm not Darcy. I'm not drinking that much. I mean, Darcy's fine to drink that much. It's entertaining, but it's really not the alcohol, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh again i did not wow that's really dusty did not put that many stitches in i know suki got quite a bit more than than i did once once we started stitching Oops. um i got 280 put into it so it's at 0 0.19 percent let me make sure i show this is a, a perfect square so i actually had to i wrote the title to see which way i'm up that's it. That's all I got done. Just black. More black. <laughs> um, I really, I, I want to do more on this one, but I'm wanting to, this and uh, my second new start at the retreat uh, was kind of an exception to my, if I start it, I'll keep it in the rotation until I'm ready to put it out of the rotation and get a new start in another new start in. Um, so this will come in when I'm ready to put my new start away that is part of my rotation. If that even makes sense. Hopefully it does. The other new start that I did at the retreat, this one is the Anything Ocean Sal that I started with Kristen and Kim and Judy from An Aussie and a Kiwi World. I think she's started one. Correct me if I'm wrong, G. Pretty sure you are. I don't remember if it's later, I think, that you're doing your new start, though. And I think Nicole from North Island Stitcher. I think she was putting some stitches in. Anyways, a lot of us are doing, like, an ocean theme Sal, so please join us again. I have not posted squat on Instagram for it, but it, it'll be there when, when I get there. <laughs> now, this one is a huge piece. Huge it uh, was a freebie on Heaven and Earth Designs. I do not know if it is still there. It's called Deep Blue Sea. It, um, I forgot. Hang on, I gotta pull up the PDF because I don't remember the artist. John Enright. I always remember his last name, but I can't remember his first name to save my life. So it is 700 by 889 stitches. So it might as well be a super size piece. It really might as well just be a super size piece. So but that is the image. And yes, I have several ocean themed pieces. Um, specifically, I think there are, they are stamped kits, but I wanted to, I don't know. I feel like a stitch along or a start along needs to be commemorated by a little bit more of a memorable piece than Chinese ripoff art. So because I'm pretty sure the two that I have very well could be ripoffs of John Enright's art. So 
I started a legit one, even though it was free. And y'all are going to be super impressed with this start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 163 stitches. 0.03%. Are you ready? This is on my 28 count China Ada. This is, this is. Now this was going to be for Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. I'm still going to do Treasure Hunt Bookshelf someday. That is a super size max color piece. With me already doing Once Upon a Fairy Tale, I felt like I didn't want to have two bookshelves on the go. So if I ever finish Once Upon a Fairy Tale, Treasure Hunt will come back into play. Um, the fall allergies are full swing, so I have I have the red nose, I have the stuffy nose. I'll try not to sniff too much, but yeah. Woohoo! I um, was just complaining about not gritting. So we'll see how badly I've screwed these ones up. <laughs> I just didn't feel like gritting at, at the point. I, for, I did not prepare properly when I took this piece to the retreat and did not have this gridded there. Now, I did grid most of Spirit of the Phoenix at, at the retreat. I just didn't. I couldn't be bothered with this one. I will eventually when I pull it back out again and get it into a Q-snap. I'll grid it again. Or I will grid it more in just the corner but that's it that's all I got done one I think that wasn't like this is the, the thread one thread length didn't even finish it out I was just super distracted good conversation good company um, I did take in uh, a bunch of my bags to sell at the retreat um, so that was kind of business side of it I was a little busy with that too which was amazing very thankful for that. I'm running enough room in my little bag here. Okay. Now, this next one was actually a new start back in October. October? September. Was a start in September. Because I had been approached. Now, if you watch James the PH Stitcher or follow him on Instagram at all, you you are this is old news for you. Um, but I was approached by James um to do like a um, mystery buddy stitch along, which I thought was fantastic. I was really honored that he asked me um, and I chose Asian Sampler by Cooler Design Studio, artwork by Sandra Orton. I am finding that I really like her pieces. Um, Jen the Caffeinated Crafter is doing her season samplers and I, I would love to get my hands on those to add to the ridiculous horde of pattern. You know, pattern collecting is just as much of a hobby as stitching. It really is because I know I'm not going to get to all of my patterns in my lifetime, but I still want them. So, but this one has a ton of like specialty, like this. You have to make that. You gotta, you gotta, like that's stitched and then that is like a I don't know how to do that, but I'm gonna learn. And there's like black work in it. Y'all, for somebody who kind of hates backstitching, there's an awful lot of backstitching in this piece. But I'm, I'm honestly, I'm finding that part of my hatred of backstitch is just when I can't see, uh, when there's no contrast between what I'm backstitching and the backstitch itself. Did I say that right? Like. Like the, it's backstitched around this, the the dark part, but I can follow that. That's pretty easy. You know, I can see the backstitching along the trees. That's not a big deal. But man, I'll tell you what, the fancy lady from Dimensions, that backstitching on her dress about killed me. I'll put the hate backstitching face on for her. Okay, so worked on that one at least once a week through most of September and then James and I were talking I had kind of ended up pushing days a little bit I would forget what day it is and and like two days later realize that I missed the uh, getting a picture off to James which I felt horrible about so James I'm really sorry that I'm a terrible schedule keeper um but we also talked a little bit about he had ended up being kind of busy that month as well and we kind of were talking about the holidays coming up and 
how his, um, you know, mystery buddy coming up if he was doing it in November, December might be a little crazy because of holidays. So maybe have like an extended sort of thing. I don't know. I don't even remember what we talked about at this point. But that meant that I got a whole lot stitched into it. That whole top portion is done. All the back stitching I've worked with, I I can't remember if this was if this called for yes, it called for Krynik for uh, like number eight and number four, and I subbed out the number four with petite treasure braid. Right? Is that how I did that? I'm pretty sure. Yes, subbed out the number four for Petite Treasure Braid. And that was the first time I'd ever stitched with Treasure Braid, and I, I it, was, it was nice. I don't mind Kranich at all, um, but I definitely think the Petite Treasure Braid has much less of a, <clears throat> excuse me, of a learning curve to it. Got all that background for the lettering done. I haven't really picked this up since um, James did his video with it. I definitely love it. Um, but I was, after working on it for a couple months, I was ready for, for a little break from that one. But super happy I finally was able to pull that out and start it because I really, really, really like that piece. Um, especially like the, the finished stitch up. Last one. 46 minutes later. But let's be honest, that's about normal for me as far as whips go. I had a lot, I had a lot this time. What was that, 12? 12. 12, 12 ones. Okay. So this last one is actually one of the very first full coverage pieces I purchased. This is a Tilt and Crafts piece. called The Edge of Forever. I first saw this on, she changed her channel name relatively recently. Maybe it's just Cat Stitches now. I, I'll, I'll link her below because she was definitely the inspiration for me getting this pattern. Now she has the cropped version and while I love the full piece, which is what I got, I really think her cropped version has better detail than what I'm going to get out of the full version. Now that being said, I'm really happy with how it's working up so far, but some of the details are definitely lost. Um, in the actual artwork, I'm actually going to pull that up instead of showing you the, the mock-up. Oops, too close, too close. Make it big enough so you can see it. This is a piece by Christopher Polari. Again, this is by Tilton Crafts. But you can see that it has like these little hearts up in the sky. And the bunny pirate. Man, this, that little guy cracks me up. His little eye patch. Oh, so, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you are you okay in there? I threw my tablet at you. Now you can't see anything. Y'all, there is no way no one is convinced that I am not half lit. It's true, I'm not. And that girl in the fountain. There's a lot of details. And this is only... 500 by 251. So 500 sounds like it's pretty big to a lot of people. Uh, 251 tall is really not that much for that amount of detail. Again, like I said, I'm really loving how it's working up, but some of the details are going to get lost. Not the right button. And I realized that when I got to I'm actually to the point where I'm in this section of the sky and you can't see those hearts. 
I was a little sad about that. And you can see the sky's a little bit pixely. Now this, of course, blends a lot better once you get into the actual DMCs. My little guy, you, you'll still be able to see his eye patch, so I'm, I'm excited about that. So, I think it'll still look great. But like I said, some of the details, it's like, oh. Thinking about making tiny, tiny French knots and putting those hearts in. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I have been working on this. This has gotten my attention pretty, pretty hardcore. Um, oh, Spirit of the Phoenix and Deep Blue Sea are both 20 account Ada. One over one full cross. Asian sampler is like all over the place. It's kind of like a dimensions kit with that. So it's got like two strands, three strands. Obviously the back stitching. I don't know if there's any half cross, but they're mostly full cross. Um, it's on 14 count called for, which is an antique white Jobelin, I think. Even weave of some sort. I just used called for. Oh, excuse me. It's a 28 count stitched three over two. For full cross, two strands for French knot, one strand for back stitching, two strands for straight. So there, yeah, it's kind of all over the place with strands and things like that. Um, this is stitched on 28 count, mm -mm, 25 count Dublin linen. It's something I had in my stash, and I was like, "There's, there's some bigger slubs in it." I am loving it. I did not think I would enjoy stitching on linen or an even or 25 count because I you know have this love hate relationship with one of my my only other I think 25 count piece um, Milaganos and but I have found a that there's kind of a method of stitching um, where you have to follow the warp and weft threads very specifically like if the the I don't know which is up and which is warp weft. I can't remember which is which, but whatever's on top, your leg, <laughs> I'd have to probably do a stitch with me, but you have to follow, pay attention to what's up and down and what's left and right when you're making your X's so that you don't slip those stitches. Once I figured that out, man, I, I had a blast. Look at this, y'all. I got a page finish already. I mean, granted, it's been like a month, <laughs> but I finished this page the other day. Um, it has so far 6,392 stitches and I am 5.90% complete. And I love it. Um, it. It is a little like the the coverage is less than I'm used to, but I'm not mad about it at all. Like, I just, I have absolutely loved the way I'm stitching on it. Like, the way I have to stitch on it to make this work just feels good. I don't know. Got a rose bush here coming in with the fleurs. There's a little building back here. It's got the light on. Moss hanging down. So, like, in the mock-up, the pixelation looks really bad with the blend, but like actually worked up looks fantastic so we'll see we'll see how this comes along I may keep this out for another page I may decide to put it away I it's uh, I'm, no I'm definitely keeping it out I don't have a desire to put it away yet so um, I don't know what's going to fully go away and what's going to come out so it'll be a surprise next time what I've been working on um, actually next video very well could be end of year whip parade because we're just about there, aren't we? Like next week is Thanksgiving. I'm not ready. Are you ready? 30, 30, what'd you say Suki? 39 days, like a couple of days ago. I did. I felt like she swore at me when she said that. Hush your mouth woman. I have done zero gift shopping for Christmas. None. And if the mess in my living room doesn't go away, the child is going to get, like, 
jeans and shirts and socks. And that'll be his coal for Christmas. Because I can't deal with the mess anymore. <laughs> Anywho. Okay, so that's what I worked on. Haul. Y'all, that could be a whole nother video. Because, like I said, I got, I got a bunch of retreat. I got a bunch after retreat. Gifty things. You ready? Are we ready? All right, let me put this tablet away. I gotta make some room. Okay. First, I show you... Okay, so there was a freebie table. Let me show you what I got off the free freebie table first. Let me get this away from the phone so it's not... Oh, I did get some feedback about the sound from a few people saying that it's fine. So I'll quit crabbing about not having a microphone and just go with it. If that changes, let me know. Okay. So I love horses and this was on the freebie table. I don't necessarily love these colors, but I kind of thought it would be fun to sub out colors. Or maybe I'll just stitch it because the more I look at it, the more I do like it. This is by Awesome Pattern Studio. Mandala Horse, Mandala Horse. Mm. It does not credit a, an artist. But like I said, this was on, on the freebie table. So I picked that one out. I really tried not to go crazy. I typically with the freebie table, I'll look over it when I first get there. And you know, after people have gotten there and kind of put their stuff out, I'll go and look at it and kind of like mental note my favorites. Um, and if I can't get that out of my head, like I keep thinking about it, I will still wait and give everybody kind of a chance to look at it because I've got, Lord knows I have enough crap to do. Um, but I think we may, a lot of us be in that situation as far as like collecting and, and whatnot, not everybody, but some, and I'll wait and then go back like towards the end of the retreat. And if my favorites that I've been thinking about are still there, then I get them. And there were two kits that I just kept, I did, I kept thinking about them. And when I went back up and they were still there, I was like, okay, nobody else wanted them. I'm taking them home. This is a dimensions kit. Listen to your heart designed by Todd trainer. And I, I really like summery kind of stitching. And this just kind of says the summer season to me, like heart of summer. Everything's in full bloom, you know, wildlife is going, I mean, yeah, there's some eggs in here for spring, but I just thought that was super sweet. And you know, it comes with the stuff. So this is an older kit because they haven't done the organization yet. So that'll be the, that fun thing. This was a uh, copyright 2001. So it's a few years old. <clears throat> this one's even older. This is a kit by Sunset, which I think was actually a division. Yeah, it's a division of dimensions was uh, Sunset. And this is from 1992 called Southwest Still Life. And I don't necessarily have like any particular affinity or affiliation with the American Southwest, but I do really love the, the colors and that type of, of decor. Not that I have my house decorated in any particular style, but I just thought it was sweet. So maybe I'll pull out kits again for, for Mania next year. Cause I have finished a few kits, not a lot, but a few. Maybe I'll pull them out again for next next year. All right. So that was one of the freebies table. Nope, missed one. This is a little pamphlet from Frony Ritter Designs called Midnight Snowflake. And I just thought it was super pretty. There's a just a full stitched version and, and a version with beads. And it's got both conversions in, in the pamphlet. And that was on the freebie table. So that'll be cute for, for a little guy. 
and I wonder if I should do this on yeah perforated paper is what it calls for for the stitch version or the beaded version so that'll be fun instead of just doing a kit I can actually kit it up myself okay a couple of things that I did pick up these were um I pop up the purchased these from Sammy J. She's a uh, sheet floss tubes. Um, Sammy J stitches. Uh, and she had a whole bunch of stuff out for sale. Now I'm not sure if she's like a, an affiliate or is like her collection, but she had like several patterns of each. So, um, I matchy matched with, with, uh, Suki. Um, she picked this up as well. And I just, I love the sentiment. Um, for me, it's, it'll be kind of, it'll be a wedding sampler. I don't have one. Um, and this is me and my husband very much. So I'll put our initials and our, our wedding day down here. Um, it's from Silver Creek Samplers called A Perfect Match by Diane Randall. So cute. And then she also had an ink circles that I really liked. Um, it looks like Tracy Horner designed this. I don't know if she's the owner of Ink Circles and does them all, but that's who's listed on here. This is Tangled Fire. And I actually, now that I've seen this again, I think I know what I'm stitching it on too. Because one of my other purchases was... Um, our host, Kat, for the retreat, she, uh, a friend of hers, owns um, Live and Die LA, and who does hand-dyed uh, fabrics and, and floss, over-dyed flosses. And I picked this up, and this is a fat quarter of Garland, it's a 32-count Lugana, and that's pretty true to color. Really, really pretty green. And I picked this up because I saw Jen brought her Cathedral Woods Goddess and it's very similar um, to the fabric that she's using. But I got home and pulled it out and I already had picked out fabric for it. Which was sent to me um, from Nana from the Crafty Shield Maiden. <clears throat> Excuse me. And while I loved the the look of what Jen was stitching on, I think I still like the one I had matched it with, not re not remembering that I had actually picked something out for it. But now that I pulled this out, what do you think? Yay? Nay? I kind of like, I think maybe that will pop. I mean, I know it's supposed to be like the yellow fire, blah, 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 but... I kind of like the idea of maybe making the stitches pop a little bit more on the green. What do you think? Now, this is not fully kitted up, so I'm not not planning on starting this any oh, I just oh, not planning on starting this any anytime particularly soon. Um I don't hate the fabric that's the model stitched on. So I kind of wanted something close to, you know, a little similar. I'll probably, I should probably do a floss toss just to make sure the colors aren't going to get lost on maybe either one of those, you know, do a floss toss on both of them and see, see what I think after I do that. But I'll, I welcome opinions too on what you think for those. Next. All right. The only other thing I picked up at the retreat purchase wise, um, I did pick up some overdies from Live and Die. And <laughs> Suki and I picked this out together. Not together. Like, I picked mine out. She picked hers out. And then we realized that this was similar. Or this was the same. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. 
This is Space Oddity. And that is so pretty. I love it. And then I also got Split Regal. Really pretty purple variegation there. Kind of blue, kind of violet. I have no plans for these. I just thought they were gorgeous. So I picked them out. And Mermaid. This one, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's coming home with me. Oh, yeah. All right. So those three flosses, my one fabric, and a couple of patterns, and the freebies. And then I had one a giveaway on Suki's channel and we knew that we were going to see each other at the retreat and I was like don't mail it that's silly save yourself the postage and bring it to me at the retreat or maybe she decided that and I just thought it in my head and that worked out but she is um was passing the stash and this is from Bucilla once upon a time and she had had this for for years and years and years, if I remember correctly. She, I know she showed this on her very first floss tube, and I was like, oh, I would stitch that. <laughs> so I was super excited when when she drew me my name for for the giveaway. It's got a few a few threads left. I will have to do the. Um, I can't remember if it comes with DMC or if they had their own. their own flosses. I am curious. Yeah, they have their own. So I will need to do a conversion or just kind of, you know, do a match, a matchy match. Cause it does have like light coral, dark coral, light peach, dark peach. And I can probably, oh, they have their Bucilla color numbers. I'm sure I can find a conversion chart somewhere online. And then she does have um, some leftovers and actually if she's got she might even have leftovers of all of them so I can match them on the, the thread book if I don't have well I'm sure I probably won't have enough to do the whole thing off of this but so generous and then she had a couple of non-claimed um, prizes so she decided to gift me this ah, I love it I have no idea how to make it, but I'm going to learn. I mean, I make bags otherwise, right? Why, why not be able to figure this one out? Yeah, I think I can figure that out. So, thank you, Suki, again. <laughs> I'm starting to not be able to breathe, guys. Okay. Now. This next ridiculousness, as I said, happened um, over the course of since StitchCon happened. We, um, my little group of ladies that I stitch with once a month, um, decided to make our pilgrimage down to Keepsakes, which is only about a 40 minute drive for us from here, on the same weekend of StitchCon, which we had no idea happened there until like that weekend. So... Um, so yeah, we get down there and there's people everywhere and it's super busy. Um, we had an amazing time looking through it's, it's a pretty relatively small building cause it's a, it's a house, like a repurposed house. Um, but you know, every room was like a, a theme, like there was spring, there was summer, um, there was like 4th of July, there was Christmas, there was Thanksgiving, you know, like primitive, I, I can't even remember it all, but it was, you know, kind of all themed. So we went through all the rooms and there have been a couple, there was one pattern that has been on my one, two, three wish list forever. And I found out that keepsakes can order stuff for you. And, you know, I was like, well, why not I support my local business? And I had seen another of the designers' pieces there. And I asked, you know, do you, do you have this one? She said, you know, one of the 
ladies that um, I talked there talked to there said no but we can always order it for you do you want me to go ahead and put you on the list and I was like you have a list I can get on so one of the one of the first patterns that I saw when I started getting back wanting to get back into cross stitch was on Rachel Ray's channel um, when I started seeing her floss tube I actually started watching her because of diamond painting and then she had a floss tube and I was like what's floss tube down the rabbit hole I fell and this is one of the first ones that she she showed by the drawn thread trick-or-treat and I was like I want to stitch that someday and for whatever reason it's just never actually made it into any card of mine until now now I did forget to like specify to go ahead and put in the dinky dies that it calls for um so I don't, I don't know if I'll end up doing it in DMC conversions or if I will handpick my own thread. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. I am not sure because I don't have a particular fabric picked out or anything for it. But I have a pattern for when I'm ready to make those decisions. And then... If you watch Jen's channel, The Bank Country Stitcher, you saw the same ridiculousness on her channel this past time. <laughs> I got the rest of the series. I have the fox. I showed that back in May, I think, is when I bought it. And I was like, I really... Okay, I thought that was the same one for a second. I was like, I know I looked through these before. Um... And when I was there, I was like, well, if you can put me on a list, can you put me on the list for the series? And they're like, sure. And yeah, they've got me all the way down to the end of the year. And I told them to go ahead and do the, uh, oops, the overdides or yeah, the, the, the specialty flosses while they were in there, except for white. Cause that's silly. I'm just going to stitch the MC white. So, yeah, and I have the Stitch Me fabrics um, that Brandy dyed specifically to complement the series as well. I don't know when I'm going to stitch all these. But I want to. So those will go on the smalls and sampler wheel to be spun for when I decide to put Ice Castle away, which may happen. Because it's not that I don't want to stitch on it, but I actually have a lot of, um, I have a lot of pieces out right now that are very similarly colored, it feels like, and I, I want to break from those, so. We made it through the stitchy stuff as far as normal update and haul. Um, so if that's all you're here for, I do have, I'll do kind of a stitchy retreat update. Not a whole lot because I don't do pictures or video when there's a lot of people around. It, I feel awkward doing that. Um, I was just watching, uh, Jamie from Cross Stitch and Chill tonight and she said the same thing. She's like, I didn't really, I feel weird. I'm like, I, I feel you, I get you because... Like, even taking pictures of other people without, like, exclusively be like, hey, do you want to take a picture? I felt a little weird. Um, so, like, I'm not even going to post the pictures that I did get because, I don't know, not necessarily, like, a breach of privacy, but kind of. Like, I'm posting pictures of people that I haven't said, hey, do you care if I put you out in the public space? Um, so, anyways... Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're not really into listening to me jabber on for however long that's going to take, I'm actually surprised this is only an hour and 15 minutes so far. I'm kind of proud of myself, you guys. I really figured this would be like a two and a half, which, okay, I better stop saying that because if I say that, it'll end up being that. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. If you are going to peace out at this point, um, I hope to see you back again whenever I decide to make another video. Um. Appreciate your support and have a lovely stitchy increment of time until I see you again. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are going to hang out and uh, 
keep sipping on your cuppas and stitching away. Um, like I said, I, I didn't really, I took a grand total of, I think, four pictures from the retreat. Um, honestly, if you want a really good recap of the event, go check out Jen from the Backcountry Stitcher. She did a, a vlog and um, she took a few pictures and yeah, it, she, she does a better recap as far as that goes. Um, Suki also did a, a recap um, and had some pictures that she, she's, she put up. Um, so, so yeah, my, my recap consists mostly of just feeling so content and so happy to have like-minded individuals around me and to have that bond of friendship that felt like sisterhood was really just, there is no, there's no way to describe. And Suki got emotional a little bit on her video. I feel like I'm going to get a little bit emotional because, because these connections are so important to me. Um, you know, you guys aren't just numbers to me. You're people on the other side of this camera, which I can't think about too hard or it freaks me out and makes me want to stop recording. <laughs> um, but knowing that there's people out there who I can just be me for the, for the most part. I mean, obviously I'm going to be a little bit more generalized with my, you know, like I swear like a sailor in, in person, but I'm not going to put that here because that's just not what I'm comfortable with, with you guys. Like, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, so I'm not comfortable doing it, if that makes sense. Um, but in, in general company, if it's like the environment calls for it and it's comfortable, then m more of me is going to come out, if that makes sense. Um, but to be able to put more faces to more people, more, that's not even right either because I mean, obviously there's a lot of floss tubers that we meet. Um, Janet, oh, I forgot. Janet Jabber uh, was there and I felt so stupid because when I got there and you know, I saw her at one of the other tables and I kept thinking, man, she looks so familiar. Why does she look so familiar? Have I met her before? Kind of like the whole hubbub with um, Debbie from Allen Gator Stitcher not remembering that we, you know, had lunch together and couldn't put, couldn't put her floss tube and her like online persona with the person that I had met. And yeah, anyways, it was a whole thing. So it finally, when I saw the, um, Janet gave these like little, it's actually an eyebrow brush kind of thing or a, like mascara wand. Um, but it's for the, the, like if you have to frog and it's the fuzzies that are left on the fabric, just comb it off with that. I should give, um, gifted those out. I think I have mine in my notions pouch and I forgot it. Um, I also forgot to grab the goodie bags that Kat put together for us. She had some, a uh, couple of needle, needle minders and, uh, some freebie, like thank you pat or freebie patterns. Um, highlighter. Suki showed it on hers and I was like, oh yeah, I should do that. No, I forgot it. Um, so yeah, anyways, finally clicked <clears throat> why I recognized her was because, oh yeah, I've seen you on Floss Tube. <clears throat> so that was really cool to meet her. Um, Jesse Marie Does Stuff was there. I did not, I did not go introduce myself. I actually did not, um, go around to the tables at all. And I, my stress level at that point was better but I was not able to like go be people-y as far as like approach other tables. That was beyond my social anxiety capacity at that point. Um, just being in the room with that many people, I was comfortable with this time around. Last year, it was terrifying. This year, the comfort level of just being in the environment was, was great it wasn't quite to where I was okay, like going around and like interacting with people. 
Um, that's definitely a level of anxiety that I have socially. Um, so I, I didn't get to meet uh, Jesse Marie in person, um, but I did. I, uh, she was pointed out to me, um, and that. And then, who else was there? Uh, she sat with Sammy J. Was there? Uh, Tina Frazier also has a uh, YouTube channel. I have not had a chance to see if she has put up uh, a retreat video yet, but I know she was recording a bit while she was there. Um, I, I'm, I'm so sorry if uh, Debbie was there from Alligator Stitcher as well. I'm so sorry if I've forgotten anybody who like has a floss tube or if I wasn't aware that you have a floss tube and you're watching me going, uh, hi, I'm here too. Yeah, I'm so sorry if, I, if that happens, if that's the case. Um, Shauna came down from Cleveland and I was able to actually meet her in person. We had Zoomed a few times with um, Dizzy Stitcher when he put up his, his Zooms. Um, so that was amazing getting to meet her in, in person. Um, there was a, a couple of other gals that actually, that actually we had when we went up in May or down in May to keepsakes, um, there were two women there at the same time as us shopping and interacting and going around no real interaction at that point, but they sat at our table and I finally dawned on me like why these two ladies felt like I had met them before. And it's because we happened to be at keepsakes on the StitchCon weekend shopping at the same time and just having like normal conversations, but not as a, it was weird. I just, I, the fact that I remember these women from a shopping trip, um, but that was uh, Karen and Sarah. Uh, and they were a hoot and a holler and a half. Um, really enjoyed having them at our table. Um, and let's see, Kristen and I actually got a room the night before the um, the retreat started. So we got there Thursday night. Um, the retreat room opens Friday morning at like nine, I think. But we had, were settled in and in there and um, just hung out. And she came down. And, um, had dinner with us, my husband and I, uh, we fed her giant slabs of steak and apparently, now she's from, um, from Canada and apparently they don't know the joys of marshmallows on sweet potatoes in Canada with a little cinnamon and nutmeg torched with a little blow torch. Oh, so good. And, um, and she brought down some of her Canadian chips. Did you know they have chips that already taste like ketchup? And then there was another one called All Dressed Potato Chips, which is like ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise flavor and I don't know, some pickles. I don't know. It was all sorts of flavor. It was like a party in your mouth kind of flavor. Uh, those were really good. So now I'm going to have to get some when I go up to Canada at First Dish North next year. But not too many because I don't eat more potato chips. Um, and she was amazing too. I was still finishing up bags um, the, the night we got there Thursday night and Friday night um, like I was, I was still putting um, poaching holes and putting grommets and stuff and putting snaps uh, we did snaps the second night so the first day I put out like the really small bags and the second day I put in put out some um, some like medium and large size bags talk about bags in a little bit um, so I, I can't thank them enough to, we kind of like tag teamed and, uh, Suki, Suki and I shared a room Friday night and Saturday night. And then, so Kristen came over to our room and hung out Friday night. Yeah. Friday night. Um, and Saturday too, for a little bit. And they helped like do an assembly line for getting my snaps put, put on those, these bags. So thank you ladies so much for your help with that. Um, because the, the whole week, like I didn't stitch for almost a week before the retreat happened. Um, I was on my feet for like, I think it was 16 or 18 hours, like on my feet that long, getting bags cut out and prepped and put together for the retreat. Cause I'm a terrible, terrible procrastinator. You guys, I am awful about it. Um, that's just, I, I've always been like that. Oh, you have a deadline that you really kind of need to meet. Let's put it off for as long as humanly possible and still kind of get it done. Um, so couldn't have done it without them for sure. 
the and it's so funny Suki talked about this a little bit in her video but she and I like she said are definitely we're not the same person but we have so like I swear we were sisters in another life had to have been because sometimes the similarities are so scary it's like but I was gonna do that <laughs> um so yeah, to be able to, to have that, that actual person to person interaction, um, online's great, but it just isn't quite the same as in person. I really hate that, that her, Kristen and Jen too, Jen was, oh man, it was so fun getting to know her more too. Um, we ended up having, like I said, we had like breakfast together and just talking about her background and, um, it was so, so I, you guys, I just, man, I love, love meeting not just other floss tubers. There was a couple of ladies that came up, um, Kim came up to me and was just, you know, she was super interested in, in my, my family business, basically, you know, my husband and I's business together and talking about how her son, um, you know, does a lot of backpacking and I got to talk like hammocks with her and get to know her a little bit, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Cause it was so hard to, you know, it's like going to a wedding almost. If you're not at the table with the people, it's hard to really chat a whole lot with other people. Um, but, and then there was, uh, another, and I, I'm so sorry that I forgot your name. Um, names and I, I, I've said this before, don't really get along very well. Um, and now I'm going to feel bad that I can't remember your name. Uh, but coming up and saying that she watches my videos and she loves them. And that's just, yeah, it's a little weird that, you know, I don't know you, but you know me a little bit. But being able to talk to somebody simply because I exist out here in the Internet is, is really is really cool. Um, and I would love to be able to get and know, get to know and meet more people that feel that they have connected with me somehow and being in trying to, I think part of the reason why floss tubers tend to, um, bond a little bit more than maybe not necessarily the, the floss tuber to their audience quite as much is because there's sort of that a little bit more, um, two way get to know you, um, that doesn't necessarily happen as easily as a, a commenter or a viewer can. Um, I've had several people message me over on Instagram and we've been able to, to, to talk a little bit more and get to know each other a little bit more, but it's, it's so hard to sometimes be able to, to see into those without having heard you talk on the other end of it. If, hopefully that makes sense. And I'm not trying to to be negative about this in any way. That's certainly not what I'm going after. Um, or to say that I value those connections less than connections with people that I've been able to see on another, on their videos. That's also not what I'm saying. Um, I just actually don't want people who aren't putting themselves out on a floss tube or, or videos. I don't want you to feel like, you're valued less because you don't also make videos. That's what I'm trying to get at. That I value you just as much. I just don't have as much of a way to connect as easily or right away. And I'm also, I guess, trying to say that if you do meet, I'm speaking on, on, for my behalf, I don't know if every person who makes videos feels like, feels this way, but for me, I guess it's more of a permission to, if you see me at a retreat and, you know, it, it's one thing to, to come up and say, I love your videos. That's great. Thank you so much for watching. Come sit with me, have a conversation. Tell me a little bit about yourself because I don't have the advantage of, of knowing you like you have the advantage of knowing me. I mean, obviously you don't know all of me, but you already have that sort of basis and I don't have that. So come tell me more about yourself. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, like I said, that part for me and then, oh my gosh, was it ladies? Was it Saturday night? 
Saturday night happened and um, we got in trouble because we moved um, Kristen's a little bit on the tall side. So you and I are like half an inch difference between our heights, which we also laughed about. Um, but Kristen's a little on the tall side. So sitting in those chairs at the table for that long was really starting to get to her. So we decided to move out to the, um, like the lounge area where there were some couches and chairs, a little bit more comfortable seating arrangement. And, um, we were not the only people out there. Karen, um, Karen and Sarah had already been out there because, um, Sarah was watching, I think her son's basketball game or something, um, or her team. I can't remember sports ball. Ugh. Um, so she didn't want the, the game to, you know, disturb other stitchers and, you know, they're like, they're like, we're so glad you're out here because we feel like we're being antisocial. So we all just started chatting. And, um, so it was me, uh, like most of our table, Paul wasn't really feeling well. Um, Alice is more of a, an early to early to bed kind of gal. And Shauna was out there. I feel like I'm missing somebody. We had a few people kind of in and out, you know, as they went by, they would stop and chat for a little bit, but that was kind of our, our core group. And I, by the end of the night, it was, it, there was a, the saying going around of what happens at retreat stays at retreat. We had a blast and a half. We were laughing. We like the concierge had to tell us to be quiet <laughs> because we were laughing so hard. We put floss tube up on the big screen. Oh man, it was, it was fun. Um, and then, yeah, and then you have to, then you have to go home at the end of the day. Um, by the way, if you were at the retreat and you purchased one of my bags or multiples of my bags, because I was blown away by people that would buy more than one, <laughs> um, even though that's kind of what I designed them for, I, I thank you so much for, for supporting me and my business. I, I was very touched and kind of speechless at how well they went. Um, especially because the sizes that I brought were not typical of what was on the website. Um, I did have some of the larger ones, but the majority, as I said, were, were kind of notion pouch size, very small sampler size, that kind of thing. I all had, I really only brought a limited number of the, the larger bags. Um, to segue into that, excuse me, I, I, I know I'm still getting some traffic, um, on the website. I appreciate you coming to check it out. I'm actually going to retool the website completely. I have done some like trying to, to fiddle around with it on the actual website and not the admin side of it. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't like how, I don't like how you navigate it. I don't like the feel of the website. So I'm, I need to retool it, but that means I need to basically rebuild the website. Um, my hotspot just reset. I have to wait for my data to speed up again before I can do that comfortably. Um, plus make time in between my, my regular job and making sure I stay sane. Um, so yes, the bags and are still coming. Um, I will still announce it, um, through Instagram. And if you sign up on the website, alaradesigns.com, if you sign up for the, the newsletter, I, there's no like monthly or weekly or, and I only put stuff out when I need to communicate. Um, and that's when I put new stuff up on the website. Um, if issues come up, I will communicate with you via email. Um, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Um, I, my bag prices are pretty much as low as I can comfortably have them and still be able to keep it running. Um, like I was able to restock my vinyl and my interfacing and my labels from the sales that I generated over the weekend and was able to, to, to finish up my purchase from keepsakes and the little bit that I got of haul from there. And that was it. So, okay. And it might finance my stitching in the Springs next March a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's coming slowly and surely. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, the best bet is to sign up on the website if you're interested to know and you don't necessarily want to check the website every day. I don't mind if you do, but um, I, like I said, I want to I want to redesign it so it's a little bit easier to navigate um, for you as a customer, and so that I can 
get a little bit more specific, hopefully, on the listings. So, um, I think that's all the things from Retreat that I remember that I wanted to share. Yeah, pretty sure that's about it. Um, life update. Um, that's actually part of why I hadn't filmed in over a month. I mean, besides the fact that there was like an entire week that I didn't stitch. Um, I don't necessarily know that I want to get too far into the stress level that I had and what happened because, or what happened to cause the stress level. Um, but I definitely felt like if I tried to film while I was in the thick of it, that it was going to be a depressing video. <laughs> I did not want to bring that kind of negativity. So, um, it's not necessarily resolved, but I'm handling it better than I was. Um, I'm not really looking forward to Thanksgiving or Christmas this year. Let's put it that way. Um, with my immediate family, absolutely. That's not going to be an issue. That's that's not where this is coming from. Um, but extended family has made it very difficult for me to enjoy the holidays this year. So, shit happens. But I don't have to be happy about it. <laughs> um, so, um... But yeah, enough of that. Like I said, I'm, I'm okay. I'm getting through it. I uh, have some really amazing support network as far as um, being able to, I guess, vent about it, to get advice on it, to get support from it, to navigate it. Um, <clears throat> and some of my stress was absolutely self-inflicted. Stuart, you weren't wrong. But I'm okay. I'm handling it fine. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, one of our, one of the, um, the stitching challenge games I'm in, um, recently changed hands as far as like, uh, the, the head admin of the group. Um, it's been a very stressful change. Um, she's, I think she's doing an amazing, um, like, uh, what, how do I want to say it? Like the, the, the the ideas that she's putting out, the the changes that she wants to do, the improvements that she wants to make is has been, I think will be amazing. Um, but they were very drastic changes from what from what we were used to. Um, there is a bit of a language barrier, and the um, our group leadership changed hands to me. Um, and then there was a misunderstanding on my part. Um, and I ended up hurting somebody, uh, I think. And, um, sorry, I didn't think that would, uh, affect me quite that bad. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, we're okay, but, I really hate that I caused somebody to feel really uncomfortable um, and pushed out because that is definitely not what I meant to do at all. Um, so if you're watching, I am so sorry. Uh, I really couldn't talk to my husband about it because, or, you know, many people who would understand or could understand because... I'm sure I would have just gotten, it's just a stupid game. Why are you even stressing about it? Why are you putting this much stress on yourself? Because it's not just a game. It's, it's also about the community that we have because of that game. Like the group that I'm in that chats all the time, we're like a family. And it feels like that, even though I've only been part of that family for like six months now. And to to realize that I caused a family member to feel bad, it feels bad, like really bad, um, especially with what I've been dealing with with my actual 
blood family. Um, you know, feeling like I did this, did the same thing to somebody that I cared about that was being done to me. It was like, um, anyway, sorry. So, um, <clears throat> everything's going better and game is running smoothly and doing the best that we all can in the circumstances as far as like what's happening now. <laughs> um, so like I said, that, that part taking on that responsibility was, was self-inflicted stress. I knew it was coming, but then to have what was happening in my personal life sort of flip side on it to my stitchy life and my stitchy family, uh, that ended up being a lot more than I was expecting. And, uh, but not something that I wanted to give it up doing for, um, you know, just had to, it's just one of those life things that you just have to get through. And that's, but it really kind of comes back around to what I said at the very beginning of the video, that the connections that I've made through this community are so important to me and to and online relationships as far as friendships go tend to be I think a little bit more tenuous than in-person friendships and relationships goes because because it's so easy to just cut that connection if something doesn't quite go over right um, there's less inclination from a lot of people to put in the effort of understanding where people come from or to make sure that you understand where someone's coming from when it's over a text message. It's, it's a lot easier to lose something in translation, whether it be sarcasm or a, a a joke that may be a little bit too culturally different to understand between, excuse me, between the two. Um, so it actually, I think, takes a little bit more dedication and more commitment to have those online friendships form bonds that last. Um, but the feeling of having them isn't less simply because they're more tenuous, if, if that makes sense. Like, just because it's easier to break the bond doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easier having it done. I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, for example, the like I was saying, that the new admin has... Um, is English, English is not her native language. And there's several quite a few players, I mean, all over the world in these games where English is our only common language. You know, somebody's native language is Dutch here and native language is German here. And the only language they understand between the two is, is English. You know, if you've already had that one step removed, it can be a little bit harder to communicate easily. And you know, so that has been um, where some misunderstandings have happened and like getting through the misunderstandings that can happen because of that and feelings that get ruffled and, and, and things like that. It's so easy to just be like, wow, she's a bitch, I'm leaving. It's harder to go, okay, no, that's not what I meant. Let's talk about what you're upset about and where I'm frustrated at and find some common ground and maybe see where it broke down at. You know, that took a lot of, that takes a lot of work. And I think we're in a society now that the more effort something is, the more it costs us, the harder it is to 
put that effort in to do it. But I think it's also so important, especially because these are global relationships, that the, the more effort you put into understanding each other from two different cultures, even if it's not like a culture thing that you're trying to understand, even if it's just communication you're trying to understand, um, I don't know, maybe that will, maybe that would help everything in the long run. Now I'm waning philosophical, you guys. That very well may be what you're talking. Anyway, so on that deep note, things are running more smoothly. I think people are starting to get more comfortable, I hope, with the changes and, and change is hard, especially if you're comfortable, but it can also be fun and it can also be rewarding in the long run. Um, and yeah, I kind of feel ridiculous for talking for 10 or 15 minutes now about a game, but let's, let's be real dungeons and dragons. Some people get pretty, pretty serious about their dungeons and dragons. This is no different. Really. We just use stitches instead of little dudes on a board. Wait, is that Dungeons and Dragons or is that something else? That might be something else. Alright guys, I think on that note I will go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Listen to my rambles here at the end. Um, I think all two of you that are still here. <laughs> um, I will see you in my next video again. Not really sure when that will be, uh, but I'm so looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.